comes up. Great, thank you. Hi. So my name's Hai Ann. I'm Director of Innovation at uh, Microsoft Research in Cambridge. Uh, and thank you to Azim and Karina for inviting me to the COGEX stage today. Um, so uh, just to give you a bit of background about myself, uh, I'm a... Uh, Oh, engineer, designer, and maker of things. So I started out in computer science and software engineering, uh, transitioning into design and innovation at uh, the consultancy IDEO. Um, and more recently, I've joined Microsoft initially with Xbox and, and now with Microsoft Research. And uh, so at Microsoft Research, you know, we're based in Cambridge. We are uh, just a, a, minute, a minute's walk from the Cambridge Railway Station which is, I think, um, some of you may know that Cambridge is uh, emerging as a, a new hub of artificial intelligence and, and technology innovation. Um, but, you know, we've been there for about 20 years, so, uh, so we're old hats at this. Um, and so Microsoft Research is an interesting organization. We were founded 27 years ago by Bill Gates, uh, one of the first uh, computer science uh, industrial R&D facilities in a big tech company. We're now eight labs and over a thousand researchers in the world. Um, and our mission is to transform the world through deep collaborative research. Uh, in Cambridge, we're uh, heavily focused on empowering people through artificial intelligence. Uh, we do really cutting edge work in uh, machine learning for healthcare, for uh, uh, gaming, for new kinds of experiences that uh, people can have. Uh, through, through confidentiality for machine learning as well. And at the same time, we're also pushing on the boundaries of new surfaces for computation um, to enable machine learning, things like custom silicon design, uh, leveraging FPGAs, and also thinking about um, new physical computing systems such as wearables, uh, new form factors for people to interact with, a, uh, with a, a digital uh, interfaces. Um, and today, actually, Azim asked if I would come and speak to you about some of uh, the work that uh, I've been leading for the last few years, specifically focusing on uh, inclusion, uh, thinking about how we can uh, prepare a digital future for everyone, for people with varying degrees of, of ability, uh, whether they be sort of permanent uh, disabilities or uh, temporary transient disabilities. So myself, I uh, became a mother uh, two years ago, and I would say for the first six to eight months of my life, I could only operate my phone with one hand. Um, and so uh, I think even in these situations, it led me to thinking about, well, how can we make technology more inclusive for you know, just people going through different uh, transitions in their lives. And according to the WHO, there's over a billion people in the world with disabilities. Um, and, you know, as we look around the room today and look around our workplaces, you know, 70% of those disabilities are actually invisible. You know, we don't talk about it. There is a stigma um, about talking about our... Um, uh, uh, inability to uh, interface with technology. And so uh, a, a huge sort of strand of work at Microsoft and at Microsoft Research is thinking about how do we enable people? Um, how do we prepare people for this digital future where um, everything will become uh, electronic and, and how do we bring everybody along on that journey? Um, and so uh, one of those stories is, uh, you know, in recent years I uh, met a, a young woman, Emma, um, through a collaboration with the BBC. And so uh, Emma is actually, uh, she's a designer like myself, and, and when she was uh, 28 years old, she was diagnosed with early onset Parkinson's disease. Um, she's a spokesman, she's uh, also in the technology field, and actually last year at COGS, she was on stage on a panel talking about um, inclusion. And so I'll just quickly show you a, a video of the work that we did together. I tend to kind of just avoid doing sketching and writing now because it's just, it's not really worth it if you get something like that. Anything you could do that would just make my hand... Oh, sorry about that. Um, so you can see that, uh, that Emma has a... Um, Emma has a, uh, a, a disability uh, in that uh, her early onset Parkinson's has made her uh, uh, handwriting uh, shaky and uh, she's unable to actually perform her, her work. Sorry, just... Uh... I tend to kind of just... 
having a little technical difficulty well, with the... I'm good. Okay, now we're going to play the full video. <laughs> I tend to kind of just avoid doing sketching and writing now because it's just, it's not really worth it if you get something like that. Anything you could do that would just make my hand I tend to kind of just avoid doing sketching and writing now because it's just, it's not really worth it if you get something like that. Anything you Thank you for bearing with me. I really want to tell Emma's story properly, so I'm just uh, correcting this technical issue. Okay. All right, I'm going to try and replicate this here. We're off to a great start. I tend to kind of just avoid doing sketching and writing now because it's just, it's not really worth it if you get something like that. Anything you could do that would just make my hand do what I want it to do and yeah. to, to sign yeah. my name would be an incredible thing. How do we even just begin to help her overcome this particular symptom of her tremors and helping her be able to regain her writing ability, her drawing ability? So what I'm doing is I'm making a, a very rough prototype and what this board does is I can connect into it through these wires, these um, tiny coin cell motors. So these motors will vibrate. I personally think that what this is doing is it's short circuiting whatever feedback loop there is between the brain and the hand that's causing the, the tremors. So the idea is if you are distracted by the vibration, are you able to write better? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> It's affecting something. I don't quite know what's happening. I'm on to something, right? I'm on, I'm on to something. She just written my name for like the first time in ages. I can't believe it. Mum, it's called the Emma. Oh, please. It's got my name on it. <laughs> <laughs> was incredibly inspired to meet Emma and to be to have the opportunity to work with her um, you know I think for me the, this journey has been discovering that there are still these new frontiers that technologies uh, can can enable can can open up and even though um, you know she says it's her writing it, it's not perfect I mean the watch helps her um, but but it's it makes it's not a perfect line but it makes it better and, and I think the other thing that she says is that uh, you know, she, she doesn't necessarily want a perfect line, that the squiggliness that remains in her writing and drawing is also a part of who she is. It's a part of her personality. So she doesn't want technology to perfect her. She just wants technology to enable her. Um, and I, I think if you, she also does uh, have some TED, TEDx talks. Um, so I do urge you to, to find her talks as well, where she speaks to her, her journey uh, through this illness. And uh, I think my journey as a technologist um, has really opened my eyes about kind of merging a design 
practice with a technology practice. So um, I uh, actually attribute to the inspiration for uh, the, the, for developing uh, this solution to um, uh, the, the musical metronome. Um, uh, the reason being that uh, I went to visit Parkinson's UK and they had a number of products on the table. At, at the time, I, I didn't really know what, what we were going to develop and they had a number of products on the table and one of them was just a, a digital metronome that, you, uh, you, it's just, that musicians use. And I said, oh, what's this? And uh, the, the person said, well, uh, actually, some people with Parkinson's, uh, they have another symptom called freezing gait. And they found that if they just take out a metronome and listen to it, um, it can help them overcome their symptoms. It's almost like a little brain hack. It's not a medical device. It's literally a, a metronome, a me musical metronome you can buy off, off Amazon. And so based on this idea of a brain hack, um, uh, the, the sort of idea of hacking the brain evolved into, into this kind of vibrating, uh, vibrating watch. Um, and so since working with Emma, you know, the watch continues to work with Emma. She's been wearing it for about two years. Uh, we've also partnered with uh, UCL, uh, with the neuroscience department at UCL and UCL Hospital. We're developing out some of the, the prototypes um, and also creating kind of software to do studies with more Parkinson's patients. So we've actually had to create completely new software to even be able to capture um, this kind of uh, data in a study format and do some of that analysis as well. Um, and so we have just been collating that, uh, that uh, study data and we're getting ready to uh, submit to a, uh, a short paper to an initial study for a medical, to a medical journal. Um, so, so keep an eye out for, for that project. Um, and these are some of the new prototypes that we're, we're working on as well. Um, and then one other story I wanted to share with you is the story of, of Amun. Um, she's a, another very brave young lady that I met in collaboration with the BBC. And Amun, um, she's, she's 10 years old and um, a few years ago she had a, a very a terrible car accident with her family. She sustained some pretty uh, strong head injuries. And uh, so she has trouble... Um, uh, with her memory. She has trouble remembering. And specifically, she has trouble with her, um, what we call her episodic memory, which is um, the, the memories of events, of uh, uh, things happening to you, of, of your stories of your life, which means that she has trouble with school. She has trouble remembering how she learned things, what she, what she was taught in school. And she has trouble with her family memory. So going on a picnic with her family, she won't remember uh, what happened uh, uh, a week, a week ago. So we work together to figure out, you know, how can we use technology to empower her and enable her in these situations? And I'll just show you, show you a quick clip of, of the work that we did together using the power of AI to um, enable her to live her life a little bit um, Do you remember more fully. Us arriving? I remember like waking up, mm. but then I like don't remember what I did after that. went for a family wedding. We just literally remember waking up in hospital. They kind of just said, she's not gonna make it. it everything was, was baby steps. She literally had to learn how to eat again, how to talk, how to walk. It was almost like having a newborn baby. And then we can perch. What was the third instruction? Did you remember? Um, no. I think we need two fixes. One to help her with her classroom so that she's not falling behind the rest of the class. And one to help her with her family memories so that she can just remember her childhood. The code is killing me. It's a tablet that sits next to you. So as the teacher is giving the lesson, you'll see the text of what they're saying appear on the screen. If Miss Pal says something, um, I can just play it back on this. Yes. yes. And so if you try it, there, so there. Um, and then the other thing you can do is in class, if Miss Pal says something,
I don't remember that. But you still have that smile on your face, don't you? I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. So, just to be clear, it works. Yes, it does. <laughs> Great, so uh, you know, thank you so much for allowing me to come on stage and share some of these stories of these amazing people with you. And I hope I've inspired a little bit in you to think about how we can um, find these problems in society, these problems in the world that we can use AI and machine learning to tackle in, in the coming years. Thank you so much. Thank you. Already? Good. Great. Are you taking her to meet the speakers? Don't worry. The mic is working. Just a question for me before we send you off. I was just curious to hear a little bit more about the team that you have and, and the people behind some of the stuff you're working on. I'm sure it takes a bunch of different disciplines and interdisciplinary work to pull some of this off. So I'd love to hear a bit more yeah, about exactly. that. Exactly. Um, so we have a, you know, we work in very multidisciplinary teams of user researchers to designers to technologists, engineers, machine learning experts. And I think that's what, that's what's really needed to sort of bring together these uh, uh, humanities disciplines as well as computer science disciplines to tackle some of these big challenges that it's not just we're not just developing technology for its own sake yeah brilliant well thank you Thanks so much that was really inspiring you. stuff